Students who attend state religious and ultra-Orthodox schools are more than twice as likely to experience sexual assault in Israel. That's according to a report by a liberal Orthodox group based on welfare ministry data. In the secular school system, one out of a thousand students receives a treatment of some kind from the welfare ministry after having been sexually abused. In the ultra-Orthodox system, however, that number is double, two out of a thousand students. And in the state-run religious school system, it's even higher, 2.4 kids out of a thousand. And these are statistics, but these are, of course, just the cases that are reported to the welfare ministry. The report was put together by Neimanei Toav Avodah Movement, a progressive religious rights group. And we're now joined by Rabbi Tzvi Koren. He's the head of the education department of that organization, Neimanei Toav Avodah. Thank you very much for joining us. I understand you're in beautiful Shorish outside Jerusalem. That's true. Hello. So disturbing data there, and this is, as I mentioned, just the cases that are reported, and we always have to remember that when it comes to sexual abuse because so many people don't speak up, so many numbers don't even arrive at the Ministry of Welfare. According to your estimate, how many cases are not reported? What are real numbers? So uh, it's very important that we differentiate between the facts or the, the data that we have and what is our interpretation of it? Uh, the numbers are based on how many people have come to the social services and been given service uh, based on this issue of being uh, sexually uh, harassed. And not only harassed, that have been uh, uh, sexually mistreated. And, uh, and the numbers are, uh, as you said, the numbers are higher in the Haredi schools. And, and we based it on, the, the research is based on what school system the children grow to, go to. And then the religious school system, the numbers are higher. How many cases are not reported? It's, it's I don't know, it's, <laughs> I guess that's a thing that's impossible to discern because you don't get the data of how many cases are not reported. What we can say is that there is certainly a rise in the awareness and the, and the a willingness of people to, to complain and to put it out in the open. I think that's a very positive development. If in the past, uh, the religious world, both Haredi and national religious, or the general world as well, was very, uh, very wary about raising any such issues, talking about it, telling the story that I've been abused and so on, then, then now there's much more of a willingness to, to bring it out. And, and that's one very important factor here. Now, now uh, is how this do you... the reason it's very hard to say why there are the differences between the different groups? And it can be, sometimes it can be very speculative. But it's interesting to note that there is a rise in the numbers of, of cases that are reported and that are being treated. And I think what we can say is that traditionally, you know, uh, sexual issues, sexuality in general, was something that we wouldn't talk about. It's something that was kind of hidden. And when it's hidden, then there are cases of abuse that nobody knows about and people just continued their lives with the pain, with keeping the secrets. And now there is a, a rising uh, willingness in religious, in the religious school system to, uh, to, to address these issues, to talk about them, not only where there is abuse, to create what we call in Hebrew, miniut bria, healthy sexuality, a healthy attitude towards sexuality. And, and, and we should also and enables we should, us to put yeah. these out in the open and talk about the cases of abuse. We, we should welcome that, and of course, that's a, that's a very good uh, movement and, and transition. And I also want to ask later on how your organization and this so, sort of work that you do is perceived and received by those communities. But first of all, let's dive back into uh, the data. Uh, and, and how do you explain the numbers? Because you said there are many variables we don't really know. What can we know? We know, for example, for one thing, that boys and girls are separated. They don't study together. Uh, what else do we know? How do we explain the fact that it's more than twice the numbers of cases that are reported in a society that keeps things very private and doesn't tend to go to the authorities? And it's, it's, as I said, it's very speculative. It's very hard to say what the reasons are. It might be true that in places where sexuality is kind of tried to be uh, contained and not allowed and the sexual uh, expressions 
are not allowed. You know, the boys and the girls are very often separate, and uh, expressing sexuality is not acceptable. What happens is it goes underground, and then things happen in ways that 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 uh, shouldn't happen. That could be a reason, but but it's all it's all very speculative. It's very hard to say. I would try and look at what we can say. What we can say is that, for instance, as like like you said, the numbers in the different systems are different. It's very interesting to note another piece of the information that relative, the, the numbers of girls that, uh, that report cases of abuse is higher than the number of boys, but the relative number of boys in the religious system is higher than that of boys in the non-religious system. Again, I could be speculative and try to speculate why that is. Maybe in a system where it's mostly men teaching boys, there are more cases of abuse of boys. But but again, this is very speculative. It's very, very sensitive, very touchy to, to say that. I would make another point, and that is that two other points. One is that well, of the two points of the data, one is that the separate, some schools in the religious system are separate, boys and girls, and sometimes the boys and girls study together in a religious school, and we don't find a difference between, we don't find a very clear difference between the two. So that what we're saying is that we have differences of opinion in the religious society about should the boys and girls be separated in the religion, in the school system, in the educational system, at what age, and so on. Some, we think that it's that we need to prepare them for adult life in a modern religious world where men and women uh, you know, encounter one another and work together and meet and talk with one another. And so, so they should be taught how to do that. Other people feel it's important religiously to separate the boys and the girls. And there, there are di different, uh, different ways of looking at it. But at least in the issue of abuse, we don't see that raising boys and girls separately creates less abuse. I wouldn't say more, but not less. Another indication is that one of the one of the points of information of data is that there is more there are more reports of abuse again i don't know how many facts there are there are more reports of abuse in smaller uh, homogeneous settlements communities like in regional communities regional areas regional schools where people live in their own very homogeneous yeah. uh, communities this is true yeah. also in the non-religious schools and in the general school educational system and also in the religious educational system and i can okay. again i might be making a speculation but i can understand that when this society is more close-knit and closed there will be more cases of abuse rather than being protected people are closer just like we know that sexual abuse happens often with people that the children are familiar with within families and so on the more closed the society is the more close-knit it is the more there's protection of the abusers and there are, there are more cases of complaints later on. Yeah, and you know, that, 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 all, that, all, that all makes sense, but you're forgetting one factor, I feel, and that is that we're talking about religious people. And I ask, where is religion? Uh, where, where does it come in to be a good person? I mean, you would have thought, or one could have thought, or I would have thought, that these societies would actually be safer for children than, you know, other secular societies where people some would say are lacking values, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I agree with, with what you're saying, some would say, and I think one of the points of our research is exactly to make that point, being religious does not mean that you have protection from, from any kind of uh, danger of sexual abuse. It doesn't mean that if you don't talk to your children about it, you don't teach them about sexuality, you don't give names for body parts because you don't want to talk about them and so on, that then they're going to be protected from it. It might mean quite the opposite, and but but the, the, that doesn't mean that our uh, conclusion is going to be, okay, let's, let's leave religion. It means that within the frameworks of religion, religious law of halakha, it is important and necessary to talk about these issues, to talk about them in a yeah. in a religious way, maybe a modest way, but not in a way that keeps things secret. Of course, you have to give and, them and we sadly, on that note, arts. sadly, Rabbi Sukaran, we have to part just because the, the commercial break is uh, here. But thank you so much for being with us today.